Hi everybody, hi, it's Wendy from The Nappy Lady and today I'm going to be doing a demo for you. I'm going to try and cover as many things as I can um, for complete beginners. So things I'm going to cover today are all the different parts of a nappy, the different types of nappies we've got, uh, different fabrics, how to wash them, I'm going to cover boosters and I've got some wipes as well. I've tried to bring as many types as, as possible as I could home from the warehouse. There's going to be a few things I'm missing, but if there's a particular nappy you want to see, um, just ask away. I'm going to have time at the end of the video for questions. I haven't set a finish time today, so just keep asking away. The website's currently shut at the moment. Uh, we've been working the last week really hard. When I say we, I'm, I mean Gemma. Um, all of the team are having to work from home. Um, we're either shielding, we're a shielding family ourselves, or we've got people you know, very vulnerable, or just generally they need to work at home. So uh, lovely Gemma has been going in the warehouse and has been clearing all of the back orders for us and single-handedly doing um, some deliveries in. So the website's been shut, so while we caught up with those orders already placed and, um, and we've cleared some deliveries. And then after this demo, shortly afterwards, I'll turn the website on again for new orders. It's not gonna be on for a huge amount of time. We've sort of said we'll take 200 orders. That's gonna give Gemma several days work. <laughs> but then once she's cleared those orders, once again, we're, we're opening the website up. So we're gonna keep trying to sort of limping along sort of through um, COVID-19 to try and keep stock going out for you. Uh, we have got stock, stock issues because some companies have locked down themselves and can't get stock into us or they can't get it out of the country. But where we can, we will keep bringing it in. If you don't know anything about uh, the Nappy Lady company, I'm the Nappy Lady, I'm Wendy. Um, and I'm still very much, I work full time at the Nappy Lady on advice, on emails, on videos and ordering stock. I love ordering stock. Um, but there's also lots of other ladies who work with me doing all different jobs. Some of them work remotely, um, a lot of work in the warehouse doing different things. But, you know, we, we all work together in different aspects. Um, an important thing I kind of, I thought, people might not know this, is that at the Nappy Lady, nobody works on commission at all. Not a single person works on commission. So no, none of the team that helped me do the advice, because um, we do it with this year, we're on track to do about 30,000 advice letters through our questionnaire service. No way I can do 30,000, guys. I'm still a big part of that, but I can't do 30,000. But all of those ladies who write your advice letters, none of them work on commission. So it doesn't matter if they recommend you know, the cheapest set or if they go for you know, something you want to, you know, more expensive doesn't make any difference to them or to me at all. We don't work like that. So, lovely to see you all here. To see, oh wow, <laughs> about 300 people. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get started. All right, and if you think of questions, I can see loads of my team are on, hi. They're gonna help answer things as well and probably shout at me if I miss something. But if you, if you think of a question and I haven't covered it as we go on, please just ask me at the end again, just remind me. So, Demo Bear. Demo Bear, is wearing a nappy I've built up for him and I'm going to talk you through the different layers we've got on here because all of the different nappies we've got they all have the same parts so even if they're called a pocket nappy an all-in-one a two-part you know there's all these different names that can be really confusing but if you're um, not sure they've all got the same parts to them to make up so outside bit that bear is wearing is the waterproof cover Sometimes it's called a wrap or a cover. The words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. So this is what keeps baby's clothes dry. So when you put baby's clothes on over the top of this, they're not gonna get wet from the nappy underneath. Now the cover is the most important part because it's keeping baby, baby's clothes dry. Right, so we're gonna open him up. And this one that uh, Demo Bear was wearing was a Mother Ease Airflow. Mother Ease Airflow, Mother Ease, a really big brand made in Canada. Uh, we stocked them for 20 years. Really excellent wraps and quite a universal one. Really hard to get hold of the stock because they're that popular. So the nappy underneath, this one happens to be a bamboozle, but I've got a big pile of them here. I could have chosen anything. This is the nappy part. And this absorbs the wee and contains the poo inside this layer. So this is a bit doing all the hard work for you. So to open this bit up, And then inside, got some more layers. So I can move this bit, I'll come back to that in a minute. This is a booster. 
Now all of the nappies are different, but most of them have a booster of some sort. Some are fully sewn in, some are you know just sewn in apart. This one on the bamboozle happens to be removable. And a lot of the companies do try to make them removable for a really good reason. One, speeds up drying, because you've got the two parts that you can hang up separately. So you've got a bigger surface area for drying, makes it quicker. But also for a smaller baby, you can remove that entirely for the first few weeks and that's gonna make your nappy slimmer. So take it out and pop it in. So I'm just gonna pop it back in so I don't lose it. I end up at the end of these sessions with just nappies everywhere. Okay, so we had, to recap, waterproof cover, then we had the nappy, then we had the booster, this bit, liner. So that liner there sits inside the nappy to make getting rid of poo easier. And that's the only thing really that a liner does. In, to a degree, it helps baby to feel a little bit drier. I'll come on to that a little bit later. There's a bit more in depth with that. But liner is there to make poo, getting rid of it, easier. Now, a key thing that people get confused with is difference between liners and boosters. We often get emails from people saying, you know, oh, well, I've got, I put an extra liner in my nappy, but, you know, it's still not absorbent enough. And we always have to check what they mean. The way to remember is a liner, it just lays in there. It, it's just laying in the nappy. It's not doing any absorbency. It's just there to line and to keep getting rid of poo easier. No absorbency. This is a disposable one. It's paper. That's all it is. Now, a booster... It's kind of the, the cues in sort of like the, the name. It's boosting, it's increasing your absorbency. So that way, if you need more absorbency, you're going to boost your nappy, make it more absorbent. So that's your boosters. Right, so they were the parts of the nappies. And every single nappy style is going to have the same parts. So next thing, how about the different types? So I'm going to go back to the one we just started on, which is called a two-part nappy. So it's my cover again. And the reason it's called a two-part nappy, you've got two parts. You've got the nappy part and you've got the cover. They are entirely separate. They do not attach together in any form at all. Two separate parts. Pros and cons to a two-part system. Benefits, you've got higher containment. You've got elastic in your nappy. You've got elastic there at the legs and you've got elastic there at the waist as well. Let's stretch it there. So you've got elastic at that point, plus you have elastic at your legs and your waist of the cover. So if you've got a really explosive bottom, ta-da, bomb-proof system. And a lot of companies do refer it to as bomb-proof system because it really is the, the best you can get. You, if, you, if anything gets past two layers of elastic, nothing was going to contain that poo. So that's where a two-part comes from. Two parts tend to be more absorbent because there's more fabric in the nappy. Often it goes all the way round, baby. You've got the Velcro tabs, so you've got absorbency all the way up here. So they tend to be, there's always an exclusion, but they tend to be really good for night times, really good for heavy wetters, uh, nap times, car journeys, that kind of thing. They tend to be the more absorbent ones. So two parts you go for, for containment and absorbency. Right, moving on. I will go to, what should we do next? Let's do pocket nappies. It's kind of a bit in the middle. So pocket nappy. I've got a big pile here. The first one off the top of the pile I picked today is a little lamb one size. Other key ones are Charlie Banana, which I'm going to do in a minute, uh, Babber and Boo or Malovia. But in the end, the pocket nappies all do the same thing. So parts to them. Outside bit is the waterproof cover. That does the same job as your mother is cover did on the first one. That is the waterproofing. Inside, it's fleece lined, and it's fleece lined all the way around, and it will have a little opening in it, which is the pocket. Ta -da -da -da. Where it looks like a hand puppet stuffs in there. So that is your outside part and your inside part. The fleece liner is the bit that goes next to baby skin. Now where's the absorbency, the nappy part, or the boosters? They are entirely separate. They are not attached to the nappy in any form. They're entirely separate. Depending on the nappy, some of them come with one, some come with two, some of them come with three. This one, I'm just going to stuff them with two. So this nappy, here we are, little pouch, inserts. So when they've been washed and dried, you take your inserts and you stuff it into the pouch. 
And when you first do it, you'll probably take ages, you know, laying it all out nice and neatly. So you get the hang of it, you just throw it in. In the end, they're designed to kind of just lay themselves flat. And each pocket nappy might have a little quirk to the design, but often, and the better ones, have like an extra bit here of fleece, and that goes over your pouch there. It just helps stop the inserts coming back out. So when you've made that up, your nappy's good to go. So when you do a nappy change, you take this whole nappy off and you'd put the whole clean one back on. There's not a single part of this that you would reuse. If you want to use a disposable liner, you can still put a disposable liner in the nappy, a paper one that's completely up to you. Now, when you take off the soiled nappy, you must remember, and this is really important, you take your inserts out of the pocket so that before you put them in your bucket or your bag to store them, they are separated. Because once your nappies go into your, sort of your dirty laundry storage, you don't want to have to touch them again until they're washed. If you leave them inside your pouch, they will not wash properly because that's waterproof. The water is not going to get through there. So really, really important that you separate them. Now, what a pocket nappy is good for? Um, they are good for sort of childcare, ease of use, um, quick changes, maybe occasionals, you know, grandparents might only change them. Because once you've made them up, and you can do that at home, leisurely sitting, watching the telly, once you've made them all up, they're good to go. They are just like a disposable nappy. Put the nappy on, off it goes. There's no difference. So if somebody hasn't seen a cloth nappy before, you can give them that, they, they'll be fine to go. Downside is the containment is lower than the two-part system. Now, important thing I said there, it's lower than the two-part system. That was the original one we talked about. Not lower than a disposable. I'll come to that in a minute. But the reason it's lower than a two-part is, yes, you've still got elastic at your legs and at your waist, but that's it. So if anything gets past your nappy, it, that's it. The next layer is going to be baby's clothes. Just the same as a disposable. So if anything gets past and out of your disposable nappy, it's going to be the baby grows and get things that get it. However, with all cloth nappies, they've got strong elastic. Look, that's really, really stretchy. That's at the waist, same on the legs, both sides. Now, disposables have got elastic, but disposable is designed to be used for two hours and thrown away forevermore. Yeah, go and sit in landfill for 500 years. So they're not going to give you really good, strong elastic, and elastic is what keeps it in. So this is why we have lots of people come to us saying, you know, I think about using cloth nappies, I get loads of dis leaks with disposables, cloth can't be any worse. Cloth is better. If you've got a good, reliable nappy, elastic is your friend. A pocket nappy tends to be lower absorbency than a two-part nappy. And this is where on the website we've got, all, you know, what I put down as drying speed containment. I'm always comparing every nappy of containment to the best, which is the sort of like the two-part system. So you can see that that's, a, that's actually a newborn size I've got there. But the fabric used in your pocket nappy inserts is less fabric than used in your two-part. Less fabric, less absorbency. So your pocket nappies are generally, and there will always be an exclusion somewhere along the line, but generally, pretty much all the time, think of them as daytime nappies. And this is where lots of people end up with one or two different types, maybe a few more, so that you've got daytime nappies and nighttime. And again, this is something that really worries um, parents when they're thinking about using cloth, because they go, oh, that sounds really complicated. So many people I know use kind of like the cheapy nappies, disposable nappies for the daytime, and then a more absorbent, maybe a branded nappy for nighttime. So even disposable users do the same thing. It's, it's quite normal. So that was a pocket nappy. There's one other I wanted to show you, just so I don't forget, which is the Charlie Banana. Now, it's a pocket nappy, waterproof cover, fleece, but on the inside, this nappy alters, let me go and find it, by, like it's like a bra strap. So, a lot of the nappies alter their length by poppers on the outside. Let me open this one up. There we go. So most nappies have poppers so that we can adjust the length on them. But the Charlie Banana actually has a bra strap. And it's, it's one of the only ones that does this. So what you do is you pull your elastic tight. And you can see down there. Ooh, where is the camera? I've been no good at this tool. There is. So you've got small, medium and large. So you alter your, like your bra elastic to make your elastic tighter or looser to make the nappy longer. So this, the Charlie Banana gives you a really like smooth front. You don't have any extra poppers to adjust the length. Um, but it is quite fiddly to do, but you only have to change the, um, 
change the settings every sort of few months. But that, that's one of the only ones that does that. Particularly good if you've got really chubby legs on baby. Right, so we've done pocket nappies, two part nappies. I'm gonna do an all in two. Right, all in two. Not to be confused with a two part. Right, so two part, recap, everyone gets this wrong. Two separate parts not attached together. An all in two, two parts that are attached together. So this is a bear and boho. Um, other two part nappies on the market are the um, Top Spots Peanuts, that's made in Scotland, it's a British one. And the Wizard Duo as well. I know nobody can get those for love, not money, but yeah, it's an all in two nappy. So what happens with these is that when you change baby, you take out your soiled insert and then you snap in a fresh clean one again. And again, you can put a paper liner in here or I say talk about fleece liners shortly, but you can put another liner in there if need be. So that's your all in two. Very similar sort of benefits um, in terms of easy use. It's very simple to put on. You can make it up quickly. Downside again is containment. Even though the pad there still has elastic on the pad and elastic in the cover, you can see that the insert, it doesn't go snugly all the way around baby's waist. It's very much sort of lying, just sort of cupping them. So containment is lower than gonna be your two-part nappy. There aren't many all-in-twos on the market. Um, there's only a few and they, are, they tend to fit quite sort of niche fits, which is where Fill in our advice questionnaire, we'd have a look and assess all your needs and see if you fit one of those. Right, final one I'm going to do is an all-in-one. So, right, I'm going to cover two all-in-ones. So I'm going to get this one out first. Yes, it's a pop-up. I always get this one out if one likes these ones. So this is a Mother Ease Uno. That aside, what I'm using it for is the fact that it's the all-in-one nappy. All-in-one, it means all of the parts are attached together in one part, there is nothing separate. Look, nothing is gonna fall out of that nappy, it's all attached. So the waterproof outside, that should be your cover. On the inside, your absorbency is attached. You see, look, it's sewn at the front, the back, and the front there. So that's your all-in-one. You can still put in a liner to make getting rid of poo easier. You don't have to in this one. Some all-in-ones come with a built-in uh, stay dry liner. Again, we'll cover a little bit more of that later, but you can put in a separate paper liner if you want. All-in-ones are the very closest you can get to a disposable nappy because there's nothing to separate. You take the whole nappy off and then you put a whole clean one back on again. You're just gonna wash it rather than throw it away. All-in-ones, really simple to use. Um, very slim, they tend to be quite slim nappies, but slimness, and absorbency tend to go together. So your all-in-ones, pretty much, once again, they are just really gonna be daytime nappies. There are a very few exceptions that we can put additional boosters in and get them through the night time for sort of like an average wetter, but pretty much we tend to try and aim for just daytime. Now, slight different one, again, the reason I want to show it is it is an all-in-one nappy, but people think it's a pocket nappy. Right, let me grab it, there's a few that do this actually. So this is a top spots again. This is their easy fit and it's an all-in-one nappy. So you see, look, everything's attached. However, you go to the back of the nappy and you see this little pouch. You put your hand in and ta-da, something comes out. But it's still attached. So it is technically still an all-in-one nappy because you can't separate it. The reason it comes out is for speed up drying. So rather than have all those layers of uh, bamboo or cotton, depending on the nappy, all stuck together, you can hang it up so it speeds up drying, it hangs out there. Um, and then once it is dry, you can stuff it back in that pouch so it's out the way, or if you become lazy like me, you can just lay it on top, whatever you want. Right, so they're the key types of nappies. So let's talk about sized nappies, be birth to potty. So, right, let me find some here. Let's just go to something different. Sized ones and ding, ding, ding. let's choose something different. Yeah, that one. Right, so you can have nappies that come in sizes. So this is the little lamb bamboo, size one and size two. See, size two is bigger. So size nappies give you um, benefits. You are going to get a better fit. So you have a small baby, you have a smaller nappy. 
you have a bigger baby, you have a bigger nappy. Um, so size ones mean you've always kind of got a better fit whatever stage baby is at. Size one tends to go from about sort of eight pounds, so an average to a good birth weight, till about 18 pounds. Again, there's always a little bit of adjustment each brand, but that's generally where we are. 18 pounds rule of thumb is an average nine year old, uh, sorry, not nine year old, that'd be really good, wouldn't it? Nine month old. So that's your size one. Then what would happen when baby outgrew your size one, you would go to your size two, which starts from on average about sort of 18 pounds, goes through to 35 pounds. And you'll probably see on all of the brands, 35 pounds is like this magic number that a lot of them cut off. And 35 pounds is kind of your average two and a half, three year old, somewhere around there, somewhere at potty training. So normally if you're going to sizes, two sizes will go all the way through. Now little lambs, I really like little lambs, they're a really good economic nappy. They are, they're a real good budget one. I think from memory, they are five to 35 pounds. I can't always remember all the prices. I can tell you the product codes, but that's really not gonna help you. But no, I'm sure they are for five to 35 pounds. So a good, good, good budget ones. So the benefits of sizes, they fit better. Um, they also have the benefit, if you're planning more children, then, you know, if baby one uses size one, moves on to size two. Baby two comes along. What nappies are you going to use for your newborn? You get them back out your loft again. So if you've now got two children in nappies, then you've got your older child in your bigger ones and your um, younger baby in your smaller ones. So you're not having to buy more nappies, you just get them back out the loft. Whereas, I'll show you um, the um, birth to potty ones, if you've only got birth to potty nappies, that, where is it, there we go, then, and your second child comes along, then you haven't got enough nappies for two children, so you need to top up and buy more nappies, which kind of then starts eating into the money you saved by buying a birth to potty in the first place. So it's all things to consider, and I know it's really hard if you're on your first baby and you're suddenly having to think, you know, am I gonna have more? But you know, it's, a, it's something to factor, factor in there. So size ones, make sure I've covered everything. So they fit better, better for more children. Downside. The only real downside to size nappies is it's going to cost you more. That's effectively it. It's not going to cost you double, um, and this comes into quantities because an, uh, as baby gets older and needs a size two, they don't. They generally don't need a change at night time. They're not going through as many nappies in 24 hours, so you don't need so many nappies in your bigger size. A general thing is 20 for a baby under six months for full time use, washing every two days. 15 for an older child. So it doesn't double your cost by buying two sizes, but it's pretty damn close to it. Someone asked what the shark one was. That's a blueberry simplex. Love it, Re really popular nappy. So, uh, first of all, but loads of nappies come in birth to potty. Now how they work, I'm gonna show you this one. First one I grabbed off the, um, the pile, but basically you've seen one nappy, you can use them all. They all work in the same way. So I'm just going to fold it over here just so you can see some poppers in amongst all the sharks there. Sharks seem to be really popular at the moment. You see there's these poppers here. You've got the male poppers along the top. You've got three on this one. And then you've got the female poppers down here. And this is so that you can popper it down to make it smaller. So I'm going to popper it down now into the smallest setting. And pretty much every one that I've got here. So this is a blueberry simplex. Um, I've got the Tot Spots ones, Bamboozles, Thirsty, Smart Bottoms, all of them down here that I've got all work in the same way, so it didn't matter which one I showed you. So there we go. I popped that nappy down. It just makes it shorter. It's taken out a little bit of length there. That was kind of like folded up in the cover. It's taken out a little bit of length in the nappy to make it smaller. So this makes the nappy down into the size of about eight pounds. Um, if you've got a newborn baby that's lower than eight pounds really, then you're better to use muslins, which I will come to, or a, like a newborn nappy, which again, I have got a few newborn options here to talk about. So generally when something says birth to potty, it's more kind of like eight pounds, you know, ish. Um, and even at eight pounds, if you wait till baby's 10 pounds, it fits even much better. It seems only silly, you know, a nappy that's at eight pounds could be a little bit bulky, but 10 pounds it's not, but that's like a quarter of baby's birth weight they put on. So that was how we adjusted the length. 
Um, at the waist as well, so this is a popper one, and a lot of nappies are poppers now because they've got more longevity, um, and they also, as baby gets older, they often learn to undo Velcro, and poppers are stronger, they stop them. So you've got different poppers at the waist, so you can make your um, nappy tighter or looser as they need it. Then as baby grows, and maybe that's beginning to look a little bit short on them, and when you're kind of adjusting and where you want it to be, you want the nappy to be just below the navel, not like really low, you don't want it up by their armpits, so just below the navel. So then in that case then, as baby outgrew the smallest setting, we would just move up to the next setting, which is the middle one. Just do that quickly so you can see what it looks like. Right, so when I've got it on the middle setting, you see now, you can see the poppers at the bottom there that we were using before, just made it a little bit longer. So that's how you get one nappy to go all the way through. Right, so I've done size nappies, birth to potties. So birth to potty is going to be cheaper for you generally because one nappy goes all the way through. Um, however, there will be a bit of a compromise on fit because it's going to be bulkier at the bottom end of the weight scale and sometimes it's a little bit tighter at the top end of the weight scale. And you've also got to think longevity. That nappy is going to take a lot of work. The average baby goes through five and a half thousand nappies in um, about two, two and a half years. That's a lot of washing. So if you've got a birth to potty nappy, it's not going to be in the sort of as good a condition as if you had two, because that's where you're sharing the wear. Imagine you get nine months out of your size one and then sort of like another 18 months, two years out of your size two. A birth to potty got to go all the way through so it takes a lot more wear on it right we have done birth to potties let's do i'm going to do some fabrics with you and i will just talk to you about velcro as well so we'll do fabrics first so let me grab together different ones here i need something made of cotton as well mm -hmm. oh let's look at that one right okay so different fabrics so traditionally they would have just been terry squares and they still exist and boy, in the last few weeks, do we know about them, the good old Terry Square. They are the most economical nappy you can get. They're a couple of pounds each and they go birth to potty. And with um, COVID-19, we've had so many people go into those. I will cover a fold for you on those, but I've got loads and loads of different folds on the website with videos and pictures and things. Um, but they are fabulous. So coming back to fabrics. So I always kind of use cotton as your middle benchmark. That is kind of your traditional fabric and it's your average one. So I'm going to look at fabrics that sort of have drying and absorbency either side of cotton. So we're going to go to the super absorbent bamboo fabric. So again, this little lamb bamboo happens to be the first one I've got. I've got different other bamboo nappies down here. But little lamb bamboo, that's a pure bamboo nappy. Really, really soft, really absorbent because bamboo is a really absorbent fabric. It, it holds lots of liquid and it holds onto it really firmly. Uh, makes brilliant nighttime nappies. It's a very uh, breathable fabric, so it's brilliant if you're in a hot climate. It's a, lovely, it's a lovely cool fabric. However, it has downsides. And the downside is the drying speed is really slow, really slow. And again, I try to always base my drying speeds and like the, the the key I've got on the website, based on air drying. So uh, kind of your worst case scenario. So this one, if I air dry that, and it really depends where I air dry in my house. If I air dry at the top of my stairs on my landing, that's kind of my quickest point in my house because the heat's rising, it kind of gets there. If I dry in, you know, our living room, rubbish, my living room is just a really cold room, doesn't get any sunlight at all, it can take ages. As an average, Bamboo on an era can take about three days. That is a hell of a long time to dry. Um, obviously in a hot climate, you're great, you don't need to worry. But on an era, it is really, really slow. You can tumble dry it, but there is always a but. Bamboo is a really delicate fiber. Um, and if you tumble dry it, you must, you absolutely must, um, you must dry it on um, low. Because if you tumble dry bamboo on hot, it will over time destroy the fabric. Um, you will start seeing sort of like balding on it. Um, it, it. I've seen someone who dried their bamboo booster on a radiator. It's actually one of my team who did it. Um, I had lines on it where, you know, the heat from the radiator was coming through. It really is a delicate fabric. So bamboo, 
really if you can just air dry it uh, and then only you know if you really have to um, tumble dry it tumble drying obviously as well whatever you do um, costs you money to uh, run it and right now budget is a, a big concern for all of us um, but also that fluff when you clear that fluff filter if you ever wondered what that is that's fibers coming off of your clothes or off of your nappies now your clothes you, you know you're probably not going to notice a difference but over time you're losing fibers on your nappy from that fluff that's absorbency you're losing so again it's your, your t-shirt i mean i've had this top for years you know you can go in the tongue dry i've really not noticed any different but your nappy is going to be washed repeatedly two three four times a week and all of those times being exposed to a tumble dry it does wear it so please really try to avoid your tumble dry if you can environmentally as well obviously it's using um electricity um, it's not good environmentally so we try to air dry but bamboo so that's your slow drying right up the other end super absorbent slow drying we're going to go right to the other end now which is microfiber now this is a bambanex teddy nappy and it's so soft it's really really soft and fluffy and this isn't a new one this is out of a hire kit i took out of the warehouse just on my last frantic day to leave so microfiber not a natural fabric microfiber is polyester um, so if you think if you've got a fleece coat, you take it out of the washing machine, you could almost put it back on. Fleece is really sort of, it, it dries really quickly. Um, and when it spins in the washing machine, all the liquid flies out of the fibres. So super quick drying. I can put this on an era six hours. You know, really quick. It, it could be good to, it, good to go. So if limited drying is you, you really can't go wrong with microfiber. It's really going to make your life much easier. Microfiber isn't as absorbent as cotton and it isn't as absorbent as bamboo, um, so daytime only. And again, this is a reason why people have sort of different types of nappies. They might have microfiber for the day and bamboo at night. So if you are someone who's got limited drying, don't think, you know, oh, I can't completely have bamboo. You could do microfiber as your day, as your main nappy because they're gonna be the ones that you need to turn over, wash, get dry again. And then you could just have your nighttime as the more absorbent bamboo or maybe cotton fabric. But because you only need one or two, as long as you've got five or six, you, you've got drying time enough to wash them and dry them. So this is where having a, a balance really works well. So microfiber, quick drying, not as absorbent. Other thing that is a benefit is Often people worry that, you know, it's microfiber, it's man-made, is that not good for the skin? Well, it stays soft. Now, my middle child is always the middle one with the problems, isn't it? My middle child had really, really bad eczema when he was little. And um, I had to tumble dry, uh, no, sorry, I didn't tumble dry, I didn't have a tumble dry, I had to air dry. So I loved microfiber because it made a huge difference to me. Um, but because I wasn't tumble drying, if you've got bamboos or cottons, they will go harder over time. That one's, it's, it's, that's a Sandy's, this is quite an old one from the kit, and it's just, it's just that bit crunchier. And if you haven't got a tumble dryer, you'll know what I mean. You wash your towels, your bathroom towels, and gradually over time they don't come out so soft, they go quite hard. Bamboo and cotton will go like that as well with nappies. Microfiber doesn't, it always stays soft. So this isn't a new nappy, and it really is, it's lovely and soft to the skin. Um, so if you have got sort of sensitive skin, you haven't got a tumble dryer, it is really soft next to them, it is, it is, it is nice next to the skin. Right, and the one in the middle, so we've done either end, um, cotton. So that was a Sandy's cotton, there's also other nappies that are cotton, the Blueberry Simplex, Little Lambs again, I haven't got, I didn't bring one home with me, but the Little Lambs, they do make them in cotton and microfiber, so if you like the idea of the Little Lambs, which is the budget nappy, there is a fabric for whatever your absorbency needs. Now, there's one nappy I have to talk about, about fabrics, and that's the Bamboozle. Again, made by Top Spots, a Scottish company. It's the only nappy that I know does this. So I stand corrected if someone else has found one, but I never have. So on the outside is bamboo fabric. So your super absorbent bamboo fabric, quite a slim fabric as well. But rather than having the, you know, the long drying speed, what they've actually done, you can just about see it on here, you see these lines here? They've sewn microfiber into the middle. So the middle of a nappy is always going to be the slowest bit to dry because you can't get air to it. You know, you can get air to the outside, which is the bamboo, but the middle layers there, you know, there's a couple of layers inside, it's locked away. So they cleverly put together the two fabrics 
So the slower drying fabric is on the outside, but it's going to get the air to it. The quick drying fabric, the microfiber, is in the middle. So this is why the bamboozle is such a popular nappy, because it allows people who like the idea of bamboo but can't cope with three days to have this one. So this dries in about 18 to 24 hours on an error. So you know, again, it's not super quick drying, but that's not really unreasonable. Again, long as you've got enough nappies and you kind of get into your regular drying um, option, that, that works really well. So that's why that nappy is so popular. It's also really good at universal. It kind of fits everybody. Right, oh, what have we done? We've done fabrics, uh, boosters, so, and nighttime nappies. I've, if you can see here, I've got piles of stuff all over the floor. Right, so boosters. Not very exciting in this section. This is about, remember what I said about boosters? It's increasing your absorbency. There's loads of different types of boosters. Let me find that we we'll start with the, the most common ones. It says I throw things all over the floor. Never find there it is. Right, that was one. So boosters. Generally, you're only using them for nighttime. It's kind of your initial. You're not hoping from day one you're going to have to boost all your daytime nappies. We're only really aiming to start with the nighttime ones. How many you have is how many nighttime nappies you've got. So if you've got five nighttime nappies, you'd have normally five nighttime boosters. And all the booster does, it increases your nappy to make it last through the night. So grab my really popular bamboo. Oh, let's go. Is it my other one? Yeah, it's definitely size two. Okay, so this is size two bamboozle. So open it up, and remember it comes with a booster on the inside. Now this is where people um, always go wrong, and you know, they say, oh, I'm getting leaks at night time, what am I doing wrong? We ask all our usual questions. Oh yeah, I've put a booster in there, the one that comes with it. <laughs> the booster that comes with it is an integral part of the daytime nappy. Nighttime, you need more boosters. So. Boosting for nighttime for an older child. This is a Mothery Sandy's booster. Really, really popular. We have sold out at the moment. I would like to say there's another shipment on the way, but COVID-19 hit, so that's going to kind of delay it. Um, the Mothery's boosters, Mothery Sandy's boosters, they are really popular because of the stay dry layer on the top. But if we're out of stock, don't panic. We've got thousands of other boosters that we've got as alternatives. So one of them, let me grab it here with is another option is an Ella's House booster. Ella's House is made of hemp. Uh, they specialize in hemp products and hemp is super absorbent. So if you can't get the Mothery Sandies, go for your Ella's House, there are thousands of them there. Hemp is really dense fabric. So it's super absorbent without being too bulky. So nighttime nappy, my first option would be, there's your, say your bamboozle. You put one additional booster in there, put your liner of choice. That's what I should do next folks, liners and then put that on baby, and then put your waterproof cover over the top. And this is another great reason for a two-part system because they're so forgiving, because you can, you can really boost your nighttime nappy, but it doesn't compromise the fit because you've got that cover over the top. But then let's say you've got a really super absorbent wetter, or, or you know, they drink a lot, and you know, one booster just isn't cutting the mustard for you. We can boost it further. You can't put more boosters inside if we put one additional one inside, but if you start putting more inside, you're going to compromise the fit on the legs, which we don't want to do. So if you do end up with a super wetter, boost your one nappy, and then we put an extra booster. Hell, we could even put two. Yeah, we can put extra boosters around the outside of the nappy. So doing this gives you more absorbency, but it's not compromising the fit on your legs and then you would put the cover over the top. Now, if you've got a super huge wetter, then you may need to go up a size wrap because even though your baby might be in the right weight range for your wrap, you've now made this huge nappy. Now, I haven't brought one here, but I know we've just had a small delivery in yesterday of if you have the most heaviest wetting child ever, the most ultimate nappy I've ever found is one called the Baby Bee Hinds. Um, nighttime nappy and boy is it big it's like loads of layers in there but if you if your child is out weed everything else go for that one it's fabulous in terms of wraps for nighttime my favorite is always the mother ease airflow because it's so um, puffy it's really designed to be puffy it's good to cover um, 
a big boosted nappy. But other options for you as well, Thirsties, Thirsties Duo are really good. And their size three goes up to 60 pounds. So again, if you've got a bigger child, you not have to worry about um, running out. Also a brand that's new in is the um, Petty Crown. They, they make several types, but the one you want for nighttime is called the Catcher. And again, it's designed for slightly bigger children, but it's got loads of room there to give you more absorbency for boosters. Right, okay, let's move those out of the way before I bury myself. So, liners, I keep forgetting these, we must forget liners. So, liners, to recap, are there to make getting rid of poo easier. So, you can have paper, which is largely what I've talked about so far, and they are disposable liners. Um, I didn't say flushable, you notice that. They are disposable. Um, they do break down eventually, but slower than toilet paper. So we don't advise anymore that you flush them. It's better to dispose of them. So if you've got a wet only liner, so it was just a wet nappy, if you have a compost bin in your garden, you can actually compost them. And it's actually really good for compost bins because the paper balances out all like the grasses and things you put in there. So they can be composted. And again, if you've got a wet only one, it's effectively just paper. Even if you've got a council recycling bin for like paper and cardboard, you could put them in there. It's just wet paper. Pooey ones don't. You'd have to bin and bag them to get rid of them. So that's paper. Pros and cons, it's that little bit easier because then you just take off the nappy. It effectively becomes like a disposable. You can deal with the poo easily. Um, but it does have an ongoing cost because you need to keep buying them. Um, they come in rolls. They look like giant toilet rolls. Our warehouse, we just had, we sold out these last week because everyone who uses them, I won't say panic buying. We really didn't have panic buying um, because people were, you know, buying their normal six, which is a multi-buy we do. Um, but we were just selling loads because people don't want to run out. Each roll comes with a hundred and there is a multi-buy if you buy six rolls. That's 600 nappies, you know, work out how many nappies you're going through. An average newborn goes through between eight and 12 a day, and uh, an older child between six and eight. So work out how many, you know, you kind of need in a period of time, so how, many, how many rolls you need. They are back in stock. I have now set a limit, so we didn't have any panic buying, but I have set a limit that the maximum is six. Because the three pallets we had of those in, it's a, we've got about 1,500 rolls, that is going to have to part, last us some time because I don't know when the next shipment's coming in. So I have set a limit on the website just to six. Right, so paper ones. But what we have been encouraging people to do because of COVID-19 is buy reusable fleece liners. Once you have these, it doesn't matter what happens in the world, you have got liners and you don't, you're not going to run out. So... A reusable fleece liner is made of fleece, polyester, not a natural fabric. So again, if that is a concern for you, you might not like fleece. Benefits to it, financial. Once you've got them, you've got them. Um, generally, a set of fleece liners is about 20. You need one per nappy. Um, when you put it inside the nappy, let's grab one here. It just sits inside the nappy, just like the paper one did. Um, when you change the nappy, if it's just a wet nappy, you're just going to put that straight into the bucket, which is the next thing I'm going to do is about washing them. If you've got a pooey nappy and you're using a uh, reusable fleece liner, you really need to do what we call sluicing it first. This is to get rid of the poo. So this is where you take the fleece liner, put it into the toilet bowl and hold on to it. Don't let go of it. And it's not all going to be covered in poo. You know, this, you know, there's always a bit on there, usually at the top edges that's clean. Put that in the toilet and flush. And the power of the clean water from the flush helps to take the poo off. Particularly when baby's weaned, it, it comes off much easier. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of extra work if you have got a fleece one, but you don't need to, um, you're not gonna run out. This one, someone's just asked which ones they are. This is a little lamb one. Um, they're really soft and fluffy. They come with all the little lamb nappies as well. So again, another reason the little lambs are so cost effective it comes with a fleece liner, free with the nappy. If you want to use paper, you still can. Um, the other fleece liner, which is really popular, but I'd sold out at the time, so I couldn't bring one home with my kit, is the Bambinex. Bambinex is a rectangular one. It's a little bit bigger surface area coverage, and it's smooth. They're, they're our very best, most popular um, liners, and we've just had, again, a shipment of those, so you're good on those. Right, done liners, washing. Right, let's put these out of the way. This is the bit where people get really, really worried. So, two methods. You need somewhere to store them. So, tends to be either 
a nappy bucket or a wet bag. No right or wrong way. Depends on your bathroom size. So if, you, if, you know, if you've got room for a bucket, that was always my personal preference. If you're a bit tighter on space, you might prefer a bag. You can hang it up you know, behind the door so it's out the way. But you basically need somewhere to store them. So I'm going to start with the bucket. Ta -da! We sell these on the website. We've just had a delivery of the bu nappy buckets in. So we got them back in stock. Um, nappy buckets doesn't have to be the one we sell. Any bucket will work as long as you know it's got a lid that helps to keep the smells in the flies out nosy fingers nosy dogs inside this is the question we always get is what the heck is a nappy mesh it's like those laundry bags you can use if you've got delicates to wash um, it is there to make wash day easier so rather on wash day having a bucket full of used nappies and you're pulling each one out and putting it into the um, machine you can have all of your nappies inside the mesh. Let's throw a few bits in. I must cover Velcro. Just remember, I still haven't told you about Velcro. Right, okay. So nappies into there. So on wash day, you can lift that mesh bag out and it's got all your nappies inside. So you can take it from the bucket to machine in seconds. Now, some people leave the nappies in the mesh bag. You see, it's just got an open elasticated top. We also sell one with a drawstring. Either way, you use it, you leave it open. If you've got a big drum, I've got three kids. My machine drum was the biggest one I could find because I do so much washing. So if I, when I put my nappies in there, I would just put the bag straight in because the drum was big enough, they moved around, they agitated and they fell out. If you've got a smaller drum, like the type I used to have before I had three kids, then you might them out first because you want the nappies to get a really good wash and really sort of well agitated so washing so there we go wash day a little tip on there now i haven't got my washing machine and i am going to film this one something to do while i'm home isn't it how to get your nappies from the bucket to the machine so what i used to do is have a muslin that was kind of that was like the opening on the washing machine so it was hanging in there and the bucket was down here so that when i lift the mesh bag out if there was any drips from wet nappies, the muslin would catch them, so you kind of didn't get any drips on your floor. You don't soak nappies anymore. So traditionally, our mothers would have had in our bucket nappy sand or bleach and water, but you don't need to soak them anymore. And soaking's really not recommended by most of the brands because it can damage elastics, it can damage the waterproofing, and it can damage some of the, like the bamboo fabric. So unless you've kind of got a traditional terry squares or... If you're hand washing, then we don't tend to say soak them. If you kind of in that any of those scenarios, you're hand washing, that kind of thing, please email us and we can give you all the advice on hand washing, but I won't cover it today because it is quite a specific one. So we are not soaking our nappies in the bucket. Literally, as I have done, I have just thrown things into the nappy bucket. It's called dry paling. So there we go. I have my mesh bag there into the machine, lift the mesh bag out, put the nappies in the drum. Then what the heck do you do? So really, really simple. So first thing to do is you do either a rinse cycle or a quick wash. And this is without any detergent, really. It's just we're trying to flush them through. So those nappies in there have got urine in them. So we want to flush that urine out and get it gone down the drain so that when the nappies are in their main wash, they're washing in cleaner water. That, that, that is the reason on this first rinse or quick wash depends on your machine. My machine has quite a good rinse, rinse and spin cycle. Other machines, they don't seem to have that function or not as good, then they do the quick wash. I really don't mind. The main thing is to flush them through and to get that water down the drain. Modern machines can be really uh, water efficient and some of the machines, and again, I know mine one does, if I put a pre-wash on as part of the set service pre-wash, it, it tests the water and it sees if the water can be reused on the main wash. That's how it gets become so water efficient. That might be fine for my kids' school tops, but I really don't want that water reused from my nappies. So that's why we go for a completely different set. So rather doing the, the quick wash or the, um, the rinse so that it's completely separate. The water's gone, your machine cannot reuse it. And this is a good way to try and um, some of these really modern uh, washing machines I think it's the eco bubble I hear about they kind of weigh your washing this is a good way to kind of um, con the machine into kind of using more water it makes it a bit heavier so quick washers or rinse cycle 
without any detergent is the normal one. Once that is done, you move to your main wash. And this should be a 40 or a 60. Depends on the brand you've got. A nappy, some of them ask you to wash at 40, some say at 60. So it really depends on your brand. Uh, 40 or 60, a long wash. None of these quick eco options, you know, 30 minutes, not going to cut the mustard when you're washing heavily soiled nappies. They are really absorbent. Some of these nappies hold four or 500 milliliters. That's a lot. <laughs> so that, you know, you, we need to have lots of water in that machine and we need to give them a really, really good wash. So a long wash, two, three hour wash is kind of what you want, not any of these quick ones. You need to add your detergent in at this point. Um, detergent, uh, it's one of the, it depends what brand you've got. I cannot give you a set answer that you need to use this brand, you need to use that. It really depends on the brand. Uh, we've got a page on the website that talks what well, is all about everything I'm um, talking to you now about, but it also has links to what every um, brand is. So if you know Mother Reese have certain requirements, um, top spots, though they you have to use non-bio for those. But have a look at that page. I possibly couldn't cover every scenario right now. But so on that main wash, you're going to add your detergent, and you are never ever going to add any softener. Softener um, it coats the fibres and makes them less absorbent and slower absorbency. It's the reason you shouldn't use um, fabric softener on bathroom towels. But I always say on bathroom towels, you know, people do often put it in there, um, but they're not being asked to absorb loads. You know, you get out of the shower and you've got your bathroom towel, your nappies, you're asking them to absorb loads. And we don't want to do anything that is going to uh, slow the absorp absorption rate. So never any fabric softener. In terms of how much detergent, and boy, God, do we get emails on this one. And, you know, there's all these different chains of thought and everything. Again, not going to get into all the debates on it. But generally, you're trying to use a proportional amount of detergent. So you don't want to use a teeny weeny bit. You don't want to use super loads of it. So look at your packaging on your detergent. Um, check out what type of water you've got. If you're in a soft water area, lucky you, soft water is lovely. Um, but if you're in a hard water area, make sure you're following the dose for the right type of water you have. Um, and also how much, you know, there's always columns. I didn't bring my detergent packet in with me, but there's always columns on the side of it that says, you know, lightly soiled, medium soiled, heavily soiled. You want to use the column that says heavily soiled detergent. So that's how much detergent you should be using plus for your water. Now, in terms of the drum, you do not want to pack your drum full of nappies. You know, it obviously it depends what size drum you have, but if you fill your drum to the top, they are not going to move around, they're not going to agitate enough. So we kind of are aiming for somewhere between a half to a three quarter full drum of nappies. That means that as they're all moving around, sloshing around, they are moving. You've not got the poor nappy stuck in the middle with everything going around it and it's not getting washed. Now someone gave me a tip a while ago, and I love it, and I do this now for my own just normal washing, is jazz hands. So you put your nappies into your machine, and at the top of your machine, when you've got your, your soil nappies in there, you should be able to put your hands in and go, just hands. That means you've got spare room that they're gonna, you've not overpacked your machine. I must be, I am the world's worst for overpacking when it's something, you know, normal clothing, but don't overpack the nappies. So when you're filling your drum, half to three quarters full, you want, you want them to be able to move around. And that's where your detergent should be coming in. So if you, you know, if you're on heavily soiled, so you're on hard water, look at how much your packaging says. Look how full your drum is. If your drum is three quarters full, make sure you're using your detergent proportional. So if say your packaging says you need 200 milliliters for a full wash, heavily soiled and um, in hard water, but you've only got three quarters of a drum, you should be using about, I've got the maths now, what is that gonna be? That'd be about 150 milliliters. So you're wanting it proportional. You don't want to use too much, too less. Any doubts, send us a picture of your packaging, send us a picture of your washing machine, what you're aiming for, and we will help you work it out. So, that's your washing. So, to recap, you put them in a quick rinse or quick wash first. Then you did your long wash, good two or three hours. And the second part is where you put your detergent in and no fabric softener. And then you're good to go. Uh, nappies come out of your machine and then you need to dry them. So you can obviously, the, the best, most environmentally friendly and the most cost effective is to air dry. So air drying, either an inside rack, outside, 
whatever you've got, that is going to be the best for your nappies. Um, if you have to tumble dry, you can tumble dry them, depending on your fabric, it might need to be on low. Radiators, yes, you can use radiators, but don't put them directly on the radiator because it gets really hot. If you think your radiators, when they've been on full, full blast for a while, actually to put your hand on them is really quite hot, it can, can burn. Same on fabric, if you want to leave it there for three or four hours, it's not going to end well. So get one of the radiator areas that kind of clip on and hang off. I use those all the time. And you can hang your nappies off of those. They're then near the heat source, but they're not on it. Um, we often get asked if like the Lakeland areas, areas that um, run on a little bit of electricity and they just warm it up. Yeah, they're fine on nappies because they don't get too hot. The only thing is I'd say if you're using that sort of heat source is don't put your waterproof cover directly on the rails, just, just in case. Uh, right, what else did I want to cover? Ah, wet bag. So that was the other option. If you're not using a bucket, you can use a wet bag. Uh, most important thing is, and it sounds obvious when I say it, but we do get people who don't do it. You put your nappies in there that are soiled. When you go to the washing machine on this, you must absolutely tip them out if you're using a bag because this bag is fully waterproof. And if you put them in the machine like that, they really are not going to wash well. Sounds silly, but we do come across it. So then one of the first things we check if someone's got a problem. So if you use a bag instead, put that in the machine with all the nappies tipped out so that they wash really well. Now this is a really big bag, but um, we do loads of smaller sizes as well. So if you are going out and about, we've got smaller bags. So you're not gonna carry your nappy bucket with you when you go to the park when we're allowed to go to the park, that is. Um, but you've got a small one. And then when you're out and about, you just use that as like a portable you know, a portable storage. So you'd put your soiled nappies in there, and then when you get home, you'd tip them into the bucket. And again, the bags can be washed with the nappies to um, freshen them up. Right, washable wipes. Now, love washable wipes. Use them for years. Use them um, on baby's bottoms, where mine was small. I now use them as makeup removers. And now with the toilet paper crisis, we are using for family cloth. But we only for girls in this house. But boy, are we saving toilet paper. Turns out the girls wee loads. <laughs> so I'll talk to you a bit about that as well. But what a washable wipe is, is basically a mini flannel. You know, that's our ones that Bambanex make those for us. I like those because they're, um, I've got these designed after I have my kids. So they're 20 by 15 centimetres. So they're a nice big size and they're good for dad's hands as well. They're not too small. Also a really well-known one is Cheeky Wipes. It's a brand they do. Theirs are 15 by 15 centimetres. Little flannels again. So what you would do is you'd have these all wet, made up, good to go. So you can buy Cheeky Wipes. I haven't got one here. I left them in the warehouse. But you can buy Cheeky Wipes do their own particular really nice box that they fit in exactly. Um, equally, you get starting out an ice cream container, better recycling, uh, Tupperware, you know, anything. We do sell our own one that is a food container, but it fits our wipes. We've got that on the website. I'm pretty sure we've still got some left when I left the warehouse. Um, but you just need a waterproof container. So um, what we do then, if you've got your wipes, they need to be uh, wet. And if you've got a small baby, just add in um, water. It's good for the skin. Um, you can have in there olive oil. You can have coconut oil. Um, something there that's going to be moisturising. But for a small baby, the first three months, I always pretty much try to stick with water. So there we go, in a Tupperware in a container, all wet. Baby comes along and needs a change. Let me grab one. So, remember this is a soiled nappy. So what you do if you've got a soiled nappy, the same as you do with a disposable. All the poo isn't lovingly just sitting on the line and just waiting for you or in the disposable nappy, that would be great. So what instead, usually you find that some of the poo is stuck to their bums. When they get older and they've shuffled all over the floor, yeah, same thing. So you use the front liner to wipe baby skin down. And that helps getting rid of the majority of the poo now is either you know on the main liner plus the bit that was on their skin is all wiped down. So then, um, your liner's out of the way, you then get your first wipe. Let's grab there. So, wipe their, down their skin, and it's really quick at um, cleaning them up. And I think it was this morning, the day's emerging into one right now, but I think I shared a video from Cheeky Wipes this morning on our own Facebook group and the Facebook page about how effective they are to wipe up. You use peanut butter, you make me laugh. Peanut butter and Marmite, I think it was. 
but they're, they're really effective because they've got fibres. So that grips onto those little bits of poo and makes it really easy um, to take them off. So even for the worst pooey nappy, I would only be using two wipes. The first one to thoroughly, you know, get all those last bits off and the second one to thoroughly clean them so that it's all gone. And those wipes then go into your nappy bucket or your nappy bag to be washed with your nappies. So it's no additional washing, it's just um, you know, washing that you're going to do anyway. For a wet only nappy, I would just use one. So they're, they're quicker for cleaning up baby and they're so cost effective. Uh, because once again, you've bought them, that's it, you're good to go. Mine are you know, being downgraded over years. I've, they turn up all over the house with different things, hand wipes and all sorts. Um, brilliant. If makeup removers, good for those. And it's talking about family cloth. So family cloth has been a thing for a while, but it's something that I've never, ever done. And this is where instead of using toilet paper, you use uh, reusable wipes. So um, being the toilet paper crisis, and we're a family of five, a pack of nine toilet rolls does not last that long, but it does now. So uh, me and my daughter, we're using these just for wees, and we've got them dry next to the toilet and a tiny little bag by Baba and Boo, and we're just putting our soiled wipes in there, and then they're just being washed every couple of days, and it saves you going through nearly as much toilet paper. It's amazing. So if you are caught out in the next few weeks, think of that. If you haven't got obviously you can buy them we've we've got just had a delivery of four boxes of these in and a few weeks time there is some more coming in cheeky wipes should be in in about a week but if you get stuck at home you can make wipes you can cut up old towels and things like that going out and about with your wipes just need either a small tupperware container or a um you know can you have a wet bag we sell a specialist little wet bags if you want to take them out wet to go right okay I've just seen a few messages from people, things that I've got to go over. So, I've been asking for terry squares and muslins. So, I'm going to do a fold really quickly. Now I need to find my muslin. So, really effective method. I'll do it with the muslin first. So, muslin, this is a genuine one of my muslins. Um, my children, my eldest now, it's nearly 15, so this is a very old muslin. Um, but the best fold I'd use for a newborn is called the Joe fold. And again, this... It's going to be hard to show on here, but I'll hold it up when I've done it. So I've got a separate video online for the Joe Fold. It's named after the lady, uh, the nappy advisor who originally designed it. Um, and it is really good for newborn nappies because it puts the absorbency just where you need it. Uh, it's got really good tabs so you can pull it and go round. Just spied my nappy nipper. I'm going to need that too. Let me get a coloured one. It's easy for you to see. So the Joe Fold. Section one, okay, without moving the camera, because if I drop the camera, that's it. We're gonna get the ceiling and all sorts. Right, so you pull your corners in until you make it look a bit like an envelope. You see that that would be the, the top of that. Do you reckon I'll get a job on the Blue Peter? Probably not, there we go. So I fold it down so I've made a smaller square. So my four corners have been brought in. Try and neaten that up a bit. It hasn't got to be neat, mine were never neat. But the idea is you're making your muslin, bring it up really slowly, there we go, smaller now, I bring in the corners in. The next thing you want to do is you are going to bring your, there we go, let me fold it and then I can unfold it for you. There we go, turn it into a rectangle. So I had the four corners in, there we go, and then you bring this one over into the middle, and this one over the top. There you go, that's not bad folding, I'm folding it, holding it upright, that's not bad going. My team have taken the mickey out of me. Right, so then, now you've got a long wedge. Okay, so, open up the top bit, they are now your wings. So, to compare it to a shape nappy, like the bamboozle, I still haven't told you about Velcro, I have to come back to that. Right, so they are now the wings, like the tabs that were going around baby, so that you've made them here. So, I'm going to put it on there. So there, this front bit is coming up between the legs. There we go. And the tabs are coming round. So how to secure that on, so baby? You could use uh, nappy pins. <laughs> that way too scary. Never used a nappy pin in my life. Nappy nippers are the way to go. They are the modern equivalent of pins. They've been around for about 20 years now, I think. Look, they've got little teeth there. They're sharp, but they're not sharp, sharp. Um, and they just grip onto the fibres and your nappy nipper goes on that way. So it just catches on, there we go, and then 
really can't see what I'm doing. There we go, catches on, and then you stretch it. Look, it's stretchy, and they work under tension, so you need to stretch it. And once it's stretched on, it's not going to come off, and then this one just comes down. And you see that I pulled it by the little coloured bits. You don't have to touch the um, white tabs, you're just using those ones. And look, once that's on, it's not going to come off, what she says, if I had to dime it properly. Right, let's put them. So if you discover, like me, that you've not actually put your tabs on right, you bring your tab round and you just alter one nappy nipper at a time. Right, I'm going to have to put them down. Do not try to change your baby while holding them in the air. It's not recommended. There we go. So you can get it. So if you alter it a little bit, you can um, make it tighter, make it looser. And once that's on, it's not going to come off. Um, and the great thing about the Joe Fold, I've just kind of done an average hold, but you can make that really small down for like a two pound baby, right up to sort of like a 12, 15 pound one. It's all in the folding. Watch the separate video I did on the Joe Fold when I've got it laid down. It's much easier to show you better. Um, once baby outgrows the Joe Fold, another really good fold is um, the Neat Fold or the Back Fold. They're really good for kind of like average sizes. And for older children, sort of like the, the biggest one I've found is the um, the kite fold. That's kind of like the biggest fold you can get. So that's with muslins. So again, if you're having a, a newborn and you get stuck, we've spent the last two weeks with so many emails and messages from people desperate to get, um, they can't get disposables moving to cloth. We've, we've moved loads of ladies over to muslins just because they've got it in the house, so easy to do. Terra squares is the other option. So, they are big cotton sheets and you'd use the same folds as you would a muslin. Uh, just more absorbent and birth to potty. Right, so I've done those. Is there, start throwing questions at me or if my team tells me everything I've forgotten to do. Velcro, Velcro, I keep promising you Velcro. Right, the only thing I wanted to say about Velcro was nappies that have got Velcro, next to the prickles, they've got fluff. And that is a laundry tab. So if you fold them over before you put them in the nappy bucket, it stops them all sticking together so you don't end up with what I call like a nappy snake where you've got 15 nappies come out of the machine. Keep your Velcro cleaner, um, stops them all sticking together. So remember to do that before you put them in the nappy bucket and pretty much all the nappies that have got Velcro have done that. Right, okay, so if I start trying it, are muslin's the only option for small newborns? Good question, see? Okay, this is where, look, oh, the demo bear, I had him. This is a bam bam. So if folding is not for you and you think, <laughs> you know, um, then there are options. So a bam bam, we've just had a delivery of these and we have got another delivery due in. We've ordered extra because everyone's stuck um, and it's a nice easy one. This is, oh, it's so tiny. It really is tiny. It's a shape nappy. So that's your nappy bit, comes with a booster, but you can take out the booster um, for a smaller baby. This goes down to two pounds. Oh, it's just so lush. So to make it really tiny, this front section, you would just fold it over back on itself to take some length out of it. So rather than sort of like the full length, look how much shorter that is. So there we go, full length again, down to short. And I have known people go up to about 15 pounds on these. So they do last a long time and they are really super slim. Now notice that there's no Velcro or poppers on this, so it's a nappy nipper, nappy. Um, Nappy nippers are really best for newborns because you can make them exactly how you want them to fit, as tiny or as big. So that's another really good option. As baby got a bit bigger, you would add your booster back in there to make it more absorbent. They are lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, if you still wanted something even easier than that, that didn't have nappy nippers, oh, this is so cute. This is a Smart Bottoms, um, oh, I forgot my name, but it's Smart Bottoms, Smart Born, I think it is. Born Smart, that's it. Born Smart, um, and that is an all-in-one nappy. So going back to all-in-one, this was all of the parts are attached. That's just so tiny. There's really light, small absorbency in there because um, it's for a small baby. Um, got poppers on the front, so you can adjust the length for it. And this one's got the cutout cord for the umbilical cord. Really, really tiny nappy that uh, fits from, you know, sort of like about four or five pounds up to about 10, 12. Of course, it really is tiny. Um, you've also got the uh, bamboozle, size one goes down to five pounds. Um, thinking, what else have we got that's really tiny? Bimbles. I haven't got any bimbles in stock, but the lady is desperately making us some bimbles. 
Thimble is very similar to a Bam Bam, but it's made of cotton, so that's quicker drying. You've got the Top Spots Teeny Fit. Again, that is the Teeny Fit, is the teeny tiny version of their all-in-one nappy. Most of the brands tend to do a small nappy, what's called a size zero, and size zero is where you're at if you want sort of newborn ones. Right, okay, throw some me some more questions. Anything I have gotten? Uh, Throw something at me. What haven't I covered? Um, uh, would you cover cover over a wrap or a muslin? Yes, you would, definitely. Anything that's not got a waterproof layer, so that's just fabric, is going to absorb, but there's nothing waterproof. So you must have a cover. Uh, newborn covers, the Mother Ease. Uh, Mother Ease, extra small or small are really good. Um, I have got those in stock, I'm pretty sure I have. Blueberry, Capri newborns, a little bit of stock, more's coming. Duo, um, that's the Thirsty's Duo, then they're a really good choice. Petty Lulu, we try to have lots of sort of different options. Um, yes, yeah, so we try to have lots of different options in stock, so if we haven't got one, we've always got something. And if you're unsure and um, you're not kind of, I'll just read that comment, where's Mr. Nappy Lady? He's keeping the kids busy, he's been told to come, not in this room. Um, but yeah, if you're not sure and you think, I've got this nappy, I don't want to get the wrong wrap, just send us a message, it's no problem, we'll um, we're, we're tell you exactly which ones match. How many wraps do you recommend for a newborn? So your ratio, really good, I missed this, is you, for every four nappies that need a wrap, you have one cover. So the ratio is four nappies, one cover. So if you have 20 newborn nappies, you should have five covers and try not to go outside of that. The wraps, you can put them in the bucket and wash um, with your nappies, but what I used to do is keep my wraps separate and just wash them with normal household washing without fabric softener. Um, just that way you never sort of ran out of them because there's always some washing going on. But other questions, um, when you get more airflow and stocking, sock. <laughs> funny. Um, there is a small, uh, we've still got mother ease, I think extra small, small, medium, large and extra large are out of stock, but I'm expecting later, maybe this week, possibly next week, but that'll probably be our last shipment with everything just going on in the world. Um, yep, yeah, I see someone's answered the question about mother ease. They're extra small and small. People often ask if it's a typo, that their weight ranges are the same, but the extra small and the small are the same weight range, but the extra small is just cut that little bit trimmer so it fits better at the bottom end. Um, what do you think of Bambino Mio? I have Bambino Mio. Right, okay. Bambino Mio, there you go. Their most famous one is the Mio Solo, which is an all-in-one nappy, and that fits first the potty. Da, 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 da. Right, okay, so poppers to adjust the length, Velcro at the waist. Now this is microfiber. So remember microfiber is really quick drying and the tongue pulls out. So it's an all-in-one, but the tongue pulls out the speed of drying. I like that it's got, on the inside, little tabs there, so when you're pulling it out, you haven't got to touch the wet pad. And when you've washed it and dry it, you can stuff that back in, so it's out the way. Now, the Mio Solo, it's a really popular one. You can get it on the high street, <laughs> when we're allowed out. Um, there's some high street stores have it as well. Um, obviously, we have it, so we'd rather you get it from us. But, um, first a potty, it is a big nappy. That's in its full setting. It is quite big, it's quite wide. It fits best for tall children. So if, um, if you come from a tall family, that'd be one that we're looking at for you. And it's particularly good for chunky children. So if you, if you make them, you know, chunky monkeys, again, really good, it's got really stretchy elastic. If baby's a bit on the smaller side or a bit more petite, they don't always, aren't always best. It can be a little bit too big for them. And being microfiber, it's not the most absorbent. So uh, a daytime one. Um, the other nappy that uh, Bambino Mio do, since I mentioned, is the prefold. Not to, people get confused with prefold and they think that it's going to be some fancy nappy because it's prefolded. No. What prefold means actually is the middle panel. See, there's three panels. The middle panel has extra layers folded over. Um, into there so that that bit is the prefold there's extra they think it's two layers of cotton on the outside three on the inside and all you do with this is you just fold it into a rectangular pad and then you lay that into a cover 
So that is, it's a very basic nappy. It's basically the American equivalent of our Terry Square. Uh, absorbency is pretty good, so it's cotton and it's quite, it's quite, you know, there's quite a lot to it. It's quite bulky on a newborn. And um, it goes sit in a cover there. You can put a cover on top, or a liner on top there. Um, in terms of containment, the containment is quite low because there isn't any um, isn't any elastic. You're relying on the outer wrap to keep sort of a poo inside. So containment is lower. So we've got them on the website. Have a look, Bambino Mio prefolds. I kind of talk a little bit more about them. There are some more folds you can do using a nappy nipper that can increase containment. One thing I would say about them is you can pick these up second hand. A lot of the second hand market with COVID-19 is on hold because of the people can't get out. But you can pick them up for like 50p um, because they're a very basic nappy. And again, I haven't got one here, unfortunately, but there's a nappy called the um, Elemental Joy. And that's made by Bum Genius. And that is, um, it's a cover. It doesn't come with any absorbency. So you can use your own. So you could buy an Elemental Joy cover that's a pocket cover and then buy a really cheap 50p secondhand prefold. And then you've actually got almost like a modern nappy. So they, they, they've got their uses. Can be used for boosters as well. Now, someone's asked about vest extenders. I haven't got one in my kit typically, uh, but there is a video on vest extenders. If you go to the page on the Nappy Lady website, look at the picture. There's a little icon that says vest extender. Click on that and you'll have me jabbering on about what a vest extender is. But they're, they're really useful, particularly for chunky monkeys or tall children. We're expecting a big baby. Uh, we're not expecting a big baby. Um, so nappies are good for smaller people, little lambs, because they're quite short ones. Bamboos will stretch you again. Oh, now I had it here somewhere. Aha, there it is, all the way over there. Um, another one that we've got in, it's the Bubble Bubs. It's, it's the big brother of the Bam Bam, it's the big. Um, it's much bigger, it's birth to potty. You alter it folding down the front, so it alters the length. So it gradually goes, grows with the child and it comes with a separate booster. They, uh, they're fabulous. We've, again, it's one that kind of fits everybody. It's really good. For, you know, there's not really anyone. It doesn't fit. Bamboo is going to be slower drying, but it's actually quite a lovely sort of thin fabric. So again, you've got a big surface area with the loose booster. So even drying isn't too bad. Last time I looked, we still got several hundred um, in stock of those and I've got more ordered as well because again it's another one with COVID-19 that you know you can't really go wrong with it. Best paper liner for a newborn and best nappy creams. Okay I'll cover these. Um, best paper liner so there's all different uh, paper liners. The ones for a newborn are either the Bambinex liners or the Ultra liners. Now last week I tried to get hold of more Ultra liners and the cupboard was bare. I can't get hold of any more so I've ordered extra Bambinex liners. The reason they are good for newborns is because it's really quite thick, so it deals with that liquid poo much better. Uh, we've got other liners on the site, but they're, they're thinner, but they're better for weaned poo. Um, nappy creams, you can use nappy creams with, um, with cloth nappies, but you need to rub it in, so it's well rubbed in so that it can't transfer to the nappy. If you put a waterproof nappy cream on baby's bottom and then rub it, you know, don't rub it in properly, it's going to transfer onto the nappy. So ones that I liked were Walida. I use that most of the time. It's a natural one. And um, the other one is Pure Potions, or they, they change their name now to Valmonds. That's, that's a really good natural one, really good for dry skin. Uh, they do an eczema cream as well, which I use on my children, but all of those are suitable for nappies. Also, the ones you can get on the high street, Maco uh, Metanium, um, what's the other one? Sudocreme, you can use those as well. Just make sure that they're well rubbed in. Right, we have twins coming. How many nappies? Right, the twins go for 30 to 36. Uh, there's only so many you can get in a washing machine. The twins, you would be washing every day. You're going to need more wraps. Generally, you're going to need eight to 10 wraps for twins. Again, particularly if you need any help, especially on twins, um, drop us an email. Bam Bams, Bimbles, they're going to be your friends really with twins. Um, da, 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 with twins. Can you use all in two wraps as a wrap for a two part system? Mm, yes, no. Ideally, no, because an all in two, um, often say like the bear and boho, is designed to be used with the bear and boho insert. 
There is an exception, as isn't there always, and that will be the Tot Spots Peanut. That is, it's a two-part nappy, or an all-in-two, sorry, all-in-two, all-in-two because the two parts separate but attach together. That's the peanut pad and that's the cover. So that one, they actually make the peanut cover so that you can use it with any nappy at all. Uh, stock on the size two is pretty much non-existent at the moment of those because everybody's bought them up. We are trying to get some more, but tot spots are pretty locked down at the moment, but we've got alternative wraps. Um, but yeah, so that generally an all-in-two is you keep it with the right insert, but the odd exception. Uh, Avino, I like Avino too. Uh, can you wash Bambanek liners if they're wee only? Yes and no. They're not designed to be washed if you've um, got a wet only nappy, and that's the paper liners, but they do withstand washing a few times. What I would say, if you are going to re-wash a paper liner, put it in a sealed mesh bag, because if that sneaks through into your wheel, uh, your washing machine filters, it's going to block it and then you have to clear your filter. And right now you don't want to be uh, having problems with your washing machine. Um, so if you do wash them, put them in a mesh bag so they can't escape. And they often do withstand um, a couple of washes. Are bamboo terry squares useful for a newborn? Um, they are bamboo terry squares. We sell them in two sizes, 50 centimetres. But remember, they're out of stock because the supply is out of stock. So I haven't got any of the, the 50 centimetres, which is kind of like your newborn size or 60 centimetres. Yes, you can use the 60 centimetre bamboo terry square. I don't have one here, I only bought the bamboo home. Um, it's a little bit slimmer than the cotton, but over time, bamboo is really delicate. It doesn't withstand nappy nippering as well. It does over time tend to wear the fibres. Um, but any terry square is better from sort of like 10 to 12 pounds. I can see my son's watching now. Hello, Ben. <laughs> right, okay, uh, any more questions? Um, anything else throw at me otherwise I'm nearly done anything else I've missed here that I need to cover any particular nappies you want to see I have a pile of different things down here we're um, trying to get in as much stock as we can um, do you need to pre-wash muslins for absorbency yes really important anything that is absorbent must be pre-washed and I liken this to a tea towel so if you've got a, a tea towel for washing up, it doesn't do the job till it's been washed a few times. Um, so the same with nappies, anything that's absorbent, make sure you pre-wash it a couple of times, it just makes it more absorbent. Um, twice is usually enough to get going, and then um, they usually reach their maximum about eight, um, eight to 10 times, then they're kind of at their maximum absorbency. A few nappies take longer to reach their, um, Smart Bottoms 3.1 is an all-in-one, um, which is, let's see if I can find it, I've been burying myself in here, right, okay, no, that's a dream diaper, oh, there he is, there you go, so the Smart Bottoms 3.1, that does take six to eight washes to meet its maximum absorbency, but if you've got a newborn, what you can do is, you know, wash a couple of times, and then just change a bit more frequently, um, because a newborn isn't going to have as much uh, wetting. In terms of change frequency, um, there's a big myth that you need to change cloth nappies more frequently than disposables. Um, but actually, you, you it's kind of gone over time. What's happened is that people have worked out that you can leave um, disposables on for longer and they're pushing them longer and longer. I spoke to one lady, she's like, oh, I leave them on in the daytime, eight hours for a disposable. It's like, oh my goodness, no. Um, cloth nappies, we try to aim for the daytime. It's sort of like every sort of three hours for training, uh, changing for average. For a newborn, you would change it every um, sort of like a couple of hours. Uh, it's just better for the skin. I try and explain that a bit like a, a sanitary pad for the ladies. It's kind of like you might be able to wear it all day, but would you really want to wear it all day without changing it? Um, but again, go onto the website and under the advice section, there is a, um, a whole section all about sort of like how old your baby is and how often you should change it. If you've not already used our advice service, I really recommend you do. It's completely and utterly free. Um, the questionnaire there, you can ask, you know, ask, we ask you lots of different questions, fill it in as best as you can. And there's some bizarre questions you might be thinking, why on heck does she want to know how tall I am? But it makes a difference because if you're a really tall family, we're going to make sure we don't recommend you a small nappy. Um, and then um, it gives, you know, it, it asks questions, what's the most sort of, um, you know, what's your preference? Is it you want slim ones, absorbent ones, all that kind of thing. Um, 
So yes, they fill in the questionnaire. What we then do is assess all your um, requirements and we'll send you a full recommendation and that's usually within 48 hours. So I have to say right now, it, it, the ladies are really working flat out. They're, they're often much quicker. It's often under 12 hours. Yeah, I've said that, I'm gonna put them under pressure now. Um, we're all at home. <laughs> Um, I have had messages saying, oh, I didn't, you know, I know you're busy, I don't want to, you know, fill in a questionnaire, add to your work. Please add to our work. Um, fill in the questionnaire, you keep my questionnaire ladies um, busy. The store is going to be open and shut um, for, a, for a bit, for, you know, for COVID-19. We are down to one lady in the warehouse. We've happened to really strictly um, social distance. We, we, you know, we just can't get risk. We've got a lot of the team have got really vulnerable uh, members of their family, including myself, who are actually shielding. So the warehouse is working on one person at the moment. Yeah, no pressure, that would be her. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I am going to open the website after this. We've been shut since Monday, um, but we have cleared, I think, 99.5 of outstanding orders from the last week. So that's one lady been packing them and then she's been taking in deliveries as well. Um, so we tried to put as much as we could on for today, so what's been delivered. Um, so we're going to open the website. I'm only going to take about 200 orders, which sounds a lot. Really, it, it's not considering how busy we usually are. But don't panic. If you don't get your order into that 200, what we're going to do, the lady who's packing, she's packing those. Um, and then once we're clear again, we open the website up. Um, we're allowing quite a big chunk today because I was doing this demo video for everyone. What the plan is once we've cleared these sort of 200 orders, and you know, that's probably going to take her the best part of a week because you know it's fine if they're 200 orders with one booster. If they're 200 orders and they've got lots of stuff, it takes her longer. Once she's cleared those, we're open again, and we are trying to get to the point where we're opening every you know every day for a couple of hours or so. But my fear is if she goes down ill, oh dear, <laughs> then we're stuck because everybody else who can process orders, pack orders, they, we, we can't do it. So uh, we're just doing little and often to try and keep keep everything going. So yeah, so questionnaire, fill that in. We also do a video um, service, so uh, with my advisors, if you need something, you've got a particular question one-on-one, -on -one, you've got a problem, you want to see something gone through, so I've not gone through every nappy here. They've got kits at home as well. They will happily do a one-to-one -one session with you. We do FaceTime, Skype, um, and we can go through everything there with you. And we try and get this, if I can do it right, um, uploaded onto the website, and I have been filming it as well, so I'm hoping to get it onto YouTube later today to cover everything. But hey, I'm at home, so if people want me to do another session, please just email me at wendy.richards at thenappylady.co.uk uh, and just tell me what you want me to do. And I'm quite happy to do like another, you know, an hour's question and answer, someone's mentioned, quite happy to do anything. It is no problem at all. We're here to try and help you through this next few weeks. Can't imagine what it would be like to be pregnant and kind of be a pregnant COVID-19 mum, you know, you get through these days. But yeah, otherwise I am going to say bye folks. I hope that's really been helpful and uh, hopefully to do one of these again soon.